Hi, I'm Silas Marques, a librarian at James White Library. This tutorial is about planning your research topic. And we're going to start with a video that will give you some ideas on how to do that. What makes a good topic for a paper? Where do I find a good topic? First, let's throw out the whole idea of topic. After all, most dictionaries define the word topic as the subject of a speech, essay, thesis, or discourse. Is this really what you're looking for? It sounds more like a report or an encyclopedia entry. Don't you want to produce more than this when writing your first psychology or English composition paper? Don't you want to create something that is interesting both to your professor and to yourself? Don't you want to learn something you didn't know before? Let's replace the word topic with the word question or research question. This implies a quest for something, a search or an active pursuit. Knights in shining armor. It's more than just a subject or a topic. This implies that you may or may not find a precise answer. This implies investigation, weighing evidence. Go for it. So what makes a really good research question? Let's start with a regular old question and see if we can figure this out. As far as I can tell, this question has only two possible answers, yes or no. I might be able to construct some pretty good arguments for one side or the other, but there are still basically only two sides to this coin. Not a lot of active pursuit going on with this question. So let's try again. Well, this seems to be a little better, but I have a feeling that you either already know the answer or have selected what you believe to be the best answer. You are leading me in one particular direction, even though I may not want to go there. And there's another problem with this question. Are you likely to find valid evidence that directly supports this generalization? Let's press on. This question certainly does not have a yes or no answer. It's very open-ended, and it doesn't try to lead me into an answer. It's also engaging and likely relevant to a college population where many students choose to smoke, drink, or begin smoking or drinking. In addition, finding an answer to this question could be significant for me, myself, my classmates, etc. I see possibilities here for investigating the nature of willpower, nature versus nurture, genetics. But the word people is problematic. Are you talking about all the people in the world? Old people, young people, all nationalities? And do you really have the energy to cover both smoking habits and drinking habits? That's a lot of territory to cover in a single paper. Personally, I feel more comfortable with this question, and here's why. A, it's not oversimplified. There is no yes or no answer. B, I believe I can locate some evidence, social, psychological, physiological, statistical, that would help me find an answer to this question. C, it's an interesting and relevant question since I am a college student. And D, this question is manageable. I believe I can answer it within the confines of my assignment. E, I might learn something new in the process of answering this question. My investigation has positive consequences. Good research questions are generally not black and white but rather have at least 51 shades of gray and maybe more. Some research topics can be more difficult than others. Very local topics might be only covered in local newspapers and might be hard to find in the general press. Very recent topics can be challenging since it takes time for articles to be written and published. Very popular topics, including sports figures, rock music and musicians, and pop culture personalities, will often only be covered in entertainment and sports magazines with very little depth. Very broad or very narrow topics can be equally tough to research. Make a list of the important concepts related to your topic and now ask yourself some questions. One, can I discuss all of these concepts adequately in X amount of pages? Two, will I have to leave something out? Three, will I run out of things to say? Make your topic manageable, but at the same time, make sure it fulfills the requirements of the assignment. Always remember, you engage in research to find answers, not to reinforce opinions or ideas that you already have.
a topic should be interesting. And in order to find out if the topic is interesting or not, you can ask a few questions. And if you answer yes to a few of them, or better yet, to all of them, then you know that this topic is interesting. What type of questions should we be asking? Do you have a strong opinion on a current social or political controversy? Do you read or see a news story recently that has piqued your interest or made you angry or anxious? Do you have a personal issue, problem or problem that you want to know more about? Is there an aspect of a class that you are interested in learning more about? All of these are important because your interest is what will keep you motivated to continue your research. A topic should also be manageable, and this is very important, and we saw that in the video very clearly. Manageable in terms of time. How much time do you have? How many days? How many months? What type of research it is? How long will it take? So we need to be careful with that and plan really carefully the time, the amount of time we have for this research. We also need to pay attention to the available resources. Do we have them at the library or in some other places? Are we able to read and understand the subject? We have to be careful that the subject isn't something that we've never read about or that we don't know anything about in the language that it's going to be used in the materials that we're going to be searching and reading, we can understand. So it needs to be manageable. It needs to be interesting and it needs to be manageable. It also needs to be narrow and focused. For instance, in terms of the aspect of the research or of the topic, the approach, is it a legal approach? Is it financial? Is it medical? Is it psychological? It, is it a, an educational area? Is it historical in terms of the aspects that the topic is going to cover? Also, we need to pay attention to the specific population. That is, the age groups, the ethnic groups, the gender and so forth. In the period of time that we plan to cover, is it a specific time period? Is it ancient history, for instance, or about the Middle Ages? Or is it about a decade, a specific decade or a century? And also the geographical aspects. Are we going to cover this topic related to Europe? or some country in Europe or Latin America or North America, or is it a state or is it in a city? And we can also define if it's going to be in a specific organization. Here at James White Library, we have a video also that will help you define and narrow your topic. So this is the library's homepage. We're going to search for a video that it's in the information literacy within the information literacy programs. If we scroll down, we'll find it, information literacy programs. And then the information literacy modules. And then the getting started with research that tab over there in blue. And as we scroll down, we'll find the video, how to narrow your topic. During your academic career, you'll be assigned research papers that let you choose your own topic. With so many areas of research available, the tough part is deciding where to start. This video will break down the cyclical nature of the research process and explain how to choose and narrow a topic into an appropriate research question and how to explore your topic through strategic searching. Research is not a one-time act that's completed once you submit your research paper. Instead, it's an open-ended exploration and engagement with information, with opportunities for discovery at every stage in the process, including choosing and narrowing your topic. When writing your paper, you may start looking into one topic, then adjust it as you continue to research and develop new insights. 
Choosing an initial focus doesn't mean you're stuck with it throughout the entire research process. When choosing a topic to research, start with a broad area of interest. What do you want to know more about? Maybe you're observing a situation and asking questions like, why? What caused that? How? If something interests you or provokes questioning, it may be a good area to research further. Another way to form a research question is to look for information gaps already present in your area of interest. Do you see conflicting areas of information? Is there something that hasn't already been addressed? By asking these questions, you may find a new path you'd like to explore. Once you have a topic you want to learn more about, determine an appropriate scope of investigation. An initial research topic may be too broad to be the subject of an effective paper. Break down your research question into smaller ones that are more specific and manageable. For example, researching internet search engines may interest you, but this is too broad a topic to research. There are hundreds of search engines, and it would be impossible to conduct effective research on all of them at once. Try getting more specific. Maybe you're interested in the negative aspects of some search engines. This is a step in the right direction, but the topic still is too broad and doesn't answer a research question. Take it one step further. Maybe you'll decide to focus on the privacy issues surrounding Google. A research question might be, what privacy issues are Google users experiencing and how are they being affected? This question specifies the search engine you're focusing on, which negative effects you're addressing, and how online users are affected. Always maintain an open mind and critical stance when forming your research question. You may end up going in a direction you didn't originally envision, but that's what makes the research process so dynamic. Now that you've narrowed your topic and formulated a research question, it's time to begin your search. First, determine the initial scope of your task. If you're researching a topic you're unfamiliar with, you should start with background research. Then, you can move to searching more in-depth sources. Before delving into complicated searches, brainstorm keywords and concepts and try searching different resources using each of these. By doing so, you may discover other concepts. Always be flexible when searching. Be open to searching different resources and using a variety of keywords to make selecting the best resource an easier process. The initial results you find may cause you to rethink or adjust your topic further, but remember, that's part of the cyclical nature of the research process. By viewing research this way, you'll find more enjoyment and success in your next paper. Don't be afraid to seek help from a librarian or professor during any stage of the research process. They're here to help. I would like to show you now the concept of a mind map. A mind map will help you structure the topic. It will give you ideas to narrow the structure. There's a tool, the mind map, at one of our websites which we can find within Credo Reference. We've seen the video from Instruct, which is a video uh, produced by Credo. And now we're going to go to their actual database called Credo Reference to find this tool. At the library's homepage, you click on search and find, and then databases A to Z, which is the second link on that tab. We're looking for a Credo reference, so letter C over here. Scroll down a bit, and here's Credo reference. Here we can type, for instance, let's say global warming. Credo reference is actually a reference database, meaning that they have encyclopedias, handbooks, manuals, materials like that, directories. But what I'm interested in, although it found 4,485 results here at the left, these are all entries. I'm really interested here in the right side with the mind map. So here's global warming and they'll give you suggestions to narrow your topic. This is very useful so you can structure your paper using main keywords related to that main central topic that you chose. And so if we have global warming, uh, we might want to say climate change. As we click there, a new set of 
words will appear so you can form your mind map. Uh, from global warming, we can go to, let's say, solar ventilation. And now you have a new set of keywords narrowing it down. Little Ice Age. And so forth. So with this, you'll have uh, the idea of new keywords to narrow your main subject. Now, let me show you an actual example. First, choose a topic of your interest. Let's say that the topic is alternative medicine. Then write your idea as a question. Let's say, what is alternative medicine? That's the main topic that you're interested in, the main subject. Then you choose an aspect or an approach that you're going to deal with this subject area. For instance, should health insurance companies pay more alternative medical treatment? Then you choose a population or the group of people that you're going to work with or you're going to do your research with, the sample. Should ac acupuncture be offered as a part of the treatment plan for people who suffer from anxiety. So you're going to study people who suffer from anxiety. Then the time period. At what point in time did alternative medicine become alternative? And the geography. Where are you going to do your research? How is alternative medicine practiced in Sonora, Mexico? versus Arizona, United States. And with this, you're ready to build your topic as a question. What types of alternative medical treatment are currently practiced on the Arizona-Mexico border to treat anxiety or other mood disorders? Let's work on an actual exercise, an actual mind map. There's a good one offered by the library at the University of Arizona. Let's go there. You have the link here and let's build our own mind map. So this is the mind map. Let's start working on it. Let's say that our topic is post-COVID-19 society. And then we'll hit next. Here we could type immunization and hit next. In this side, we could type social distancing. In the next one, it could be isolation. The next one could be poverty. And we just can continue, let's say scientific discoveries or social distancing, let's say psychological, psychological traumas. For isolation, we could type, let's say, stress. And then for poverty, economic hardship. These are just examples. And we can hit next. And here's the structure of our paper. And over here, you can write the research topic that you want to actually have for your paper or for your research based on this structure right here. 
and then we can hit next. And you can save your idea by capturing the screen or by writing it down. So this is the end of our tutorial on planning your research topic. I hope that these videos and the presentations and the information we passed on to you in this tutorial will be useful as you plan your next research topic. You can reach me at my email, silas at andrews.edu, and also by phone, 269-471-6263. You all have a nice day and success in your next research assignment.